I bring on stage now Sarah Richard, who has been a, a diver for over a decade, and uh, which was a dive professional out of Micronesia. She had this idea, this inspiration to start the community and movement to encourage more women uh, into diving, and that became the girls at Scuba. So, ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Richard. Thank you, Andy. Hey guys, thank you all so much for coming, and I am going to introduce you to three amazing women who I'm so excited to have up here on stage, their first time on stage, so we want to give them a big round of applause, all three of you come up. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I am going to let these amazing girls introduce themselves first up. So girls, tell us a little bit about yourself. I want to know how old you are. I want to know your certifications, where you live and everything else. Inca, you've got the mic, so we'll see you. I'm Inca Creswell. I'm 25. Can you hear this? Hi. I'm Aika Creswell. I'm 25 and I'm an underwater camera operator and I work in the natural history, wildlife filmmaking industry. Oh, and I'm from Bristol. I live in Bristol, but I'm from Brighton. Um, so my name is Grace Westcalf. I'm 17 at the moment and I started diving when I was 10. I live in South London and my high cert is Master Diver and I've just recently done my sidemount course. And I'm Mae Dorricott. I'm originally from Tarleton in the northwest, but now I live in Bristol as well. My highest certification is rebreather, but I'm also a HSC commercial diver, and I also work in Bristol in the natural history department. Awesome. So these three girls have a couple of things in common. The first thing being they all started scuba diving very young, got 10, 11, and 12, I believe. Um, so some of these girls actually might have been diving longer than some people here, which is crazy because they are Incas, I think, is the oldest at 25. So they've already had an amazing career, but their career has only just started. The other thing they've got in common is they are all in, or want to be, in film and TV. Again, which is an incredible achievement considering they are young girls and they've already done some amazing things in TV and in film and have some great stories about it. So I'm going to start with May, and I think May said, she hopefully did, that she was a Rolex scholar. So first of all, I want you to tell people what a Rolex scholar is and how it actually relates to diving, because does Rolex relate to diving? Yes, it does. <laughs> so um, I was the 2017 European Rolex scholar, and basically there is a society called the R World Underwater Scholarship Society which offers out three diving scholarships a year one to North America, one to Europe and one to Australasia and basically as long as you've got an interest in scuba diving and want to utilise that in your academic interest you can apply between the ages of 18 and 26 I did, I got it and you basically can travel the world with Rolex on your arm and supporting you, being able to do whatever you want in the diving industry, learn from the best, work with scientists, researchers, and build up your diving experience. So that's what I was able to do in 2017. Which is great. Me. And another thing I believe is you have to be younger than 26. Yeah, yeah. younger than 26, have an academic background, so either be doing your undergrad or doing your masters. So that's, um, we're going to talk more about the Relic Scholar and how to get into it, but I just want to, I wanted May to mention that to just show you that um, there are some initiatives out there to try and get younger girls into diving, um, and it definitely works because May has been around the world and now she's speaking on stage, so that's awesome. So, and then going from that, talking about age, I want to talk to Grace about possibly frustrations of, of how it feels being, you know, 17 now, but being so young in diving and being so passionate about it and just wanting to go forward but I mean do you feel like there was ever is there restrictions on being a young diver? I think definitely so I obviously was 10 when I started and at that age you can only you're limited to I think it's 12 meters um, which wasn't a problem for me at the time but now that you I had to wait a long time basically to be able to do the courses that I want to do and I still can't progress onto a professional level until uh, this time next year. Um, so that is the first thing I'll be doing next year. But I think also balancing school and diving at the same time is really difficult because I feel like I'm sitting in school the whole time and all I'm thinking about is how much I want to go diving. And sometimes I just, I phone my dad and I have to be like, oh, what, when are we next going diving? Because I can't sit here any longer. 
Um, luckily, I'm at a really good college now, which is in film and television. It's called the London Screen Academy. Um, so I'm a lot happier now because I am working towards what I want to do when, uh, hopefully next year. Yeah, great. And do your school um, encourage you in diving? Do they know anything about it? Do they even know what scuba diving is? Here's some of the students. Like, how do your peers feel about your scuba obsession? <laughs> Obviously, my close friends know, and they always call me Scuba Grace when I walk around the school. They always shout at me, it's like Scuba Grace. Um, but yeah, so I am lucky that I have a really good life. She's kind of a careers advisor, but she's worked in the film industry for a long time. Her name's Jane Fraser. Um, and she's got me some really good contacts like at Pineville Studios, so hopefully I'll be able to get some work experience there soon. That's awesome, isn't it? It's good to know that there is some support in schools at the moment. Um, do you think that's something in the future you would like to offer yourself, like, knowing the frustrations of being a young girl wanting to get into diving? Definitely, yeah. And I know my club, Ocean Diver, um, that I'm part of, have almost half of their club is kids. Um, and it's great that they're going to primary school kids, but I think we also need to get secondary school kids and sixth form kids more into diving because they're at the age where they can choose what they want to do for a career. Yeah. Where if you're younger, it's a lot of them drop out halfway through because they maybe their parents aren't as supportive as my parents have been. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I want to go on to Inca because Inca said when you mentioned that you think about diving all the time at school that she used to be like that. So I mean I want to know your kind of journey so far from going to being just like Grace, wanting to go diving to now, you know, working as an instructor and now into video and film. So tell us a bit more about that journey. So for me, a lot like Grace, I started really young and my dad got me into it. So I was actually in quite a fortunate position where my dad he works um, in underwater in the film industry, so I was able to help out with him on shoots growing up and I just became more and more enthusiastic that this is absolutely what I want to do with my life. And it was kind of that passion and just like my love of scuba diving that led me to study marine biology at university. So from the age of literally like five or six years old, I was telling everyone that when I'm older I'm going to be a marine biologist. And I absolutely followed through on that and went to university did a degree in marine biology, but I think throughout my entire undergrad, I was just always noticing this massive disconnect between science and general awareness, and I wanted to be able to really educate people about the problems that are facing our oceans today, and that was what led me more and more into film and into photography, and then I did a master's in wildlife filmmaking and kept picking up little kind of independent freelance camera jobs throughout my studies as well. And then, of course, the amazing girls at Scuba sent me to Egypt with Behind the Mask, which was the best experience because I was able to really just like improve my cinematography skills so much through that community. And then by the time I graduated, I was able to land my dream job working in food and natural history. So amazing! Congratulations! It's incredible what you've achieved so far, and as I said, just at the beginning. So it's going to be amazing. Um, so if any of you were here yesterday, we we started talking about kind of jobs in the scuba industry and how you can get into the industry not necessarily just as an instructor um, or something like that which you know are renowned to be quite badly paid and then maybe got quite a short lifespan you know you can be an instructor and then you kind of hear a lot of people say now, now they need to get an adult job so I want to talk to you guys about jobs about working in the industry about staying in, in the industry and kind of if anyone here wanted to do the kind of jobs that you guys are doing and want to do like how they could do it so May, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you actually do now um, and how you how you got that job and the connections you made. Yeah, so I thought, I think always to work in documentaries is the dream of most people, but it wasn't like a direct path for me. My, I just wanted to be under the water. Um, so I just kind of played around with different ideas and when I did my dive master, I was like, is this for me? Maybe, I don't know. Do I want to go down more of a sciencey path? I don't know, maybe. And then when I got the European scholarship, it was a real chance to be able to follow people who did different avenues that I was interested in and learn from them and just learn their life in that role. Um, and then eventually I came across like scientists who were doing amazing things but didn't have the chance to be able to talk about it because being a scientist takes up a lot of time and you don't have time to shout about it as much as you would like to. So just like Inca, I was like, I want to be able to bridge that gap. And then because of all the experience that I learned during my scholarship year, the contacts that I made, I was able to just basically go banging on people's doors in Bristol and be like, let me in! I want to I help you! I want to help the world! Um, so yeah, 
So that's how I basically got in, just knocking on the door with all the qualifications that I had, um, a background in marine biology, diving, um, and just being a bit, uh, yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. And I'm Grace, I'm I'm gonna make up assumption. Did you know anything about the Rolex scholarship? Um not until about two weeks ago. Right, okay. <laughs> well yeah, there we go. So um, as May said, she she got a scholarship by just applying and she got some money and she managed to travel the world and meet some amazing people in the dive industry. And for you, that's exactly what you would like to do, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean I met this morning, someone introduced me to two other Rolex scholars and now I've got someone else sitting here that's also been a Rolex scholar. And the more I'm hearing about it, the more I really want to do that now. And I'm so excited for that. Yeah, definitely going to apply. Uh, and then after that, hopefully I'll be doing what Inca does. <laughs> right, I mean, you three girls, so there we go, you're connected now, you can all help each other out. But um, I feel like, um, I don't know about you girls or anyone in the audience, there isn't that much information on how to get into these kind of jobs and how to kind of get into these kind of educations. And, you know, here we have three very young girls who have managed to do it themselves, really, not really with too much help of how to get there. So I think it's a great example of how we all need to be um, encouraging people more, but also sharing information. Um, brands as well, who have the accessibility to do things like that, could launch their own scholarships. Um, and you know, we all need to talk about it a little bit more, so, so more and more people come into the industry. I think it's just great that we've got like all three of you here that want to do the same thing. Um, so Inka, did you have any help and support from any brands or anyone in the industry or anything like that to help you where you are now? Absolutely. I think something that I did this course, which is a Masters in Wildlife Filmmaking, and that was fantastic because it literally taught every aspect that you need to know on how to kind of approach this industry. It allowed us to build some incredible connections and we were also given mentors from the BBC who were just fantastic. But as well as that, I think something that was important to me was also building my personal brand at the same time. And I did that through social media and that allowed me to keep kind of testing out material, testing out my audience, understanding it better and I think the beautiful thing about social media is that you kind of get the opportunity to publish all of your own work. You're not reliant on a production company to go, okay, yes, this can go out. So it was a really good learning tool for me to kind of just start to develop and start to build my own content. And that, just trying to do that, I met so many amazing organizations, such as Girls at Scuba, such as Behind the Mask. And I feel like those brands and those companies have taught me so much along the way and meant that when I was finally in a position where I felt like I had the knowledge of the natural history industry through my masters, and I'd also made my first film, but I also had the social background, it just helped me a lot when it came to applying for jobs. Yeah, that's great. So I think the moral of all of that is um, to really put yourself out there and not be afraid. And we spoke a little bit yesterday about how you can do that, and the girls were like, you just need to be walking around, and you need to be talking to people and saying hi to people. And, and, you know, making sure that they remember you and just say, you know, actually we spoke last time and, you know, now I've followed you on social media and I saw that you went to XYZ and it's sometimes as easy as that to get remembered. So, you know, you think I was all doing very well with that on your social media and everything like that. So I also want to talk about, which we didn't really uh, touch on much yesterday, about um, how it is being a female in the, in the industry. Um, I'm quite interested for you girls because you, you are slightly younger, but you, you also did come into the industry, you know, around about, even around about the same time I did. So I want to know, like, your personal experiences of being a woman in the industry. Do you think there are enough women? Do you think there's too many men? Like, what do you, what do you think about it? I think that it is still, I, I love that now when I go diving, there are a lot more girls on the boat. But when I started, absolutely, I was not only the youngest on the boat at 11, but I was also the only girl. So starting off, I feel I can understand why that'd be discouraging for a lot of people my age to kind of go, oh, this isn't an industry that's for me. Yeah. So now I really love that there are so many more women that are in this industry and at a professional level. But I still think it's lacking on the side of female underwater camera operators. There's still so few of them. There's still so few technical divers that are girls. And even now, when I tell people that I love scuba diving and I go diving with sharks, they're just like, you're a girl, what are you doing? And it's just like, no, that's a thing. Yeah. So there's definitely still some stuff that we have to overcome. But I think that's why film and media are so important, is because we can create those role models and show that this is an industry that women can do. This is an industry that women are incredible at. And yeah, that's exciting. Absolutely. I just want to quickly say that is um, Inca behind us. 
it's, it's my footage, but it's not me. Uh, okay. <laughs> That, that's not actually you. There's <laughs> English versions behind us. You that are, is guy, you are featured. You this, is see me. this is me now. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that there still aren't enough women in it, and there is still a lot of. Um, this is going to sound stereotypical, stereotypical, but when I came into it, it was a lot of older men. Uh, I mean, I started with my dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. It was a bit intimidating at the start, especially being younger as well, like you were Inca and also me. Um, but I think that Facebook groups like Girls at Scuba are so good because I was on all the Facebook groups. I only got Instagram when I started diving and everyone was like, oh, I'll get these Facebook groups for all the um, the big dive, dive groups like Divers Forum and whatever. And some, I remember putting a post on saying that I passed my paddy advance and some people were so mean on it. Um, they were like, oh, are, is it even safe that you're diving when you're that young? And I was like, that is not something that's going to help my confidence. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just think if everyone was more supportive of women, and especially young people, uh, it would just be a lot better place. Yeah, I, I really agree with what everyone's already said. Um, I've personally not had any struggle doing what I want to do because I'm a woman. I think. I think anyone who wants to dive can dive, it doesn't stop you. And I don't think I really looked at the demographic and I was like, oh yeah, I am the only girl, but it didn't really bother me. I just cracked on really, because it's what I wanted to do. But I definitely agree, if, if there was more women just around the ratio, I think it's a, just a more comfortable environment for girls to be around, like when you're changing in a car park. Or just little things like that, it's just making it a little bit more comfortable for younger girls to be around. And in dive clubs, like, having a female instructor so that when a young girl comes in they're not intimidated by some burly hairy man <laughs> sorry but you know there's a, a lovely lady to kind of yeah. take you through if you are a little bit more um shy as a girl that's great yeah i think that i mean that's great and um you know we can be humorous about it we're, we're not being <laughs> feminists or we're not you know gender stereotype and there, there is a lot of, uh, yeah, hairy men. <laughs> so yeah, I think if you were um, coming to a dive centre and you saw these three, um, if you were a young girl, I think it would not be, be a lot more inspiring and encouraging, which is which is why at Girls at Scooby we really, really want more younger girls to come into diving. But let's talk about UK diving. Tell me about your experience, your favourite place, how you feel about it. Um, a lot of girls that have come over to the booth today have said, oh, but, it, but it's so cold and, and, you know, I don't like the cold, which is completely fine, completely normal. I don't think anyone loves being cold, do they? So, I mean, how do you feel about UK diving? Um, I love it. I grew up learning in quarries. Um, but then when you got out to the sea, it was amazing. We had angle sea, we used to do trips to the farms and play with the seals. Um, and I think, yeah, as long as you've got the right gear, you can stay down for as long as possible. And it's, it's amazing. Like, I got to go in the chance with uh, one of my friends. She took me up to Sula Skier in North Rope in the very north of Scotland. And it was like, we were staying in a converted trawler boat. It was very, like, rustic. But it was the most amazing reefs I've ever seen. It was gorgeous. So much colour, so much life, so many seals, so many fish. And you wouldn't expect that in British waters. And I think maybe that's what we need to, as a community, promote. is not just girls in bikinis diving on tropical reefs, but the amazing wildlife we have here for everyone to see. Yeah, I mean, I agree completely. Um, I absolutely love UK diving, and obviously no one likes being cold, but, and you do need the right kicks. I mean, I remember doing a side mount tri-dive uh, a couple of years ago, and there was a guy in Raysbury, which is notoriously oh. not very warm, in a shorty three millimeter wetsuit, and I was like, what are you doing? I was wearing my full otter dry suit with like so many fleeces underneath. Um, but yeah, I honestly, I think if you've got the right equipment to do it, and people are so nice, like people are willing to help I um, if you speak to brands they will give you good discounts because you want you're enthusiastic about what you're doing um, so yeah I just UK diving has so much to offer and if you can dive in the UK you can pretty much dive anywhere I think that UK divers are the people who genuinely you know they love diving 
Like, if you dive in a quarry that has no visibility and freezing cold water and you still come out with a smile on your face, like, you are a hardcore diver. Like, people who dive in the Caribbean only are sometimes, it's like, you can't take them as seriously because it's like, but do you really love diving? And I just feel like British people who really get out there and they go out in the ocean and just make the most of it, like, there is so much that it has to offer. And I think that sometimes cold water has an entirely different kind of beauty that you just don't get in other places. And there are places that where diving is definitely more comfortable and the visibility is definitely better. <laughs> but it is, it is something really, really special. And we have so many amazing charismatic species here on our local coast. And I wish more people saw them. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's um, inspiring and encouraging to hear you girls be so positive about UK diving. And as you said, I think if you can dive in the UK, you can dive anywhere. So it's brilliant to hear you guys say that. Um, I want to touch more on a little bit about film and you know TV. Um, I want to hear about um, first up Inca and May. What you've got coming up? What projects you've got coming up? Anything you can tell us about, or anything you can't tell us about? You can say I'm working with a certain company that I can't tell you about, but... I'm working with a certain company. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently working for Wild Space Productions and we've just started production on a new really exciting ocean series that's being produced for Netflix and it's going to be something really amazing and that is as much as I can say. That's enough. Coming soon to Netflix. Um, I work for Plimsoll Productions in Bristol and we just finished a series, a presenter-led um, show for Animal Planet which is Blue Planet 2 Behind the Scenes meets River Monsters, um, so I'll leave it at that. And then I'm still at Plimsoll working on a natural history series which I can't say anything about. Fine, come and see. <laughs> and Grace, um, I definitely believe in manifestation and putting out there what you want, what you want to achieve and I think that you've all done that already so let's manifest what you want to do where you want to go in film and TV um, so basically the what started me wanting to be in film and TV was literally watching the Blue Planet you know that like the 10 minutes at the end and it's behind the scenes I was looking at those camera people and most of them were men and I was thinking like how cool would it be if I could just be on that I don't I don't want to be on TV but I just want to know that I've helped film something like that and as I think it was Inka that was saying earlier um, conservation is so important um, and I know a lot of people do marine biology but if people aren't aware about it there's not much point in doing it because we all need to help solve the problem basically absolutely and I truly believe that we will be hearing from Grace in a few years and she will be telling us exactly what company she can't mention that she's working for next so I'm really looking forward to, to that happening so um, I'm going to actually put it out to the audience now um, I hope you've got some questions for these three amazing girls um, so do we have Andy Dorbert here oh Okay, I'll do the question. Has anyone got any questions they would like to ask these girls? Yeah, yeah. Right, hands up, anybody's... Oh, that didn't take me long, did it? Look, one right here, here we go. Um, so, obviously, we, we face a lot of difficulties as women, but I've noticed more in my last 20 years that it's not my gender that's the issue. It's my physical abilities and disabilities. And a lot of people just don't believe that I could possibly dive. But actually I'm better in the water than I am on land. Um, but there, there are still a lot of barriers and I'm just wondering whether you know many people with disabilities who've managed to get into the film and television work. It's such a brilliant question. I have to say that I'm still very new to the industry myself and I haven't had the opportunity to work with anyone yet. However, as a dive instructor, I did have the opportunity to teach multiple people who were without certain limbs and it was easy to actually modify my techniques and teaching to allow them to be able to be in the water. And like you said, there was one guy, he had only one leg and he was my best student and he was absolutely fantastic. So I really hope there will be more opportunities and I personally would love to see more people with disabilities actually on screen in documentaries because I think that when we see that, you'll get a lot more young people who have disabilities feeling passionate and feeling enthusiastic and motivated that they too can pursue those types of careers so I really hope it's something we see more of in the future that's what I want to do <laughs> 
Um, just adding on to this, this wasn't in the film and TV industry, but I recently did an adaptive diver course, um, and it was with Liam, who is one of the only blind instructors, I think, and his wife, Denise, is in a wheelchair, and she, I've seen videos of her diving, and she's honestly amazing, so I really do hope that more people will be able to get job opportunities in diving, but um, like Liam has, he's now teaching people this adaptive diver course, and it is amazing. Can I just ask, is there more of a move now to, um, to be more inclusive in diving? Sorry, I've got the microphone in front of the speakers, but especially in the UK, I mean, there are there are organisations that work with disabled divers, but do you see this increasing a little bit? Yeah, I think so, because I think generally, I think we find diving therapeutic and releasing and so much freedom underwater. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are using it as a way to just, you know, liberate. Um, and one of the guys in my club back at home has reduced arms and has basically a modified mask and he is one of the best divers that we have in our club and he's teaching people and it's great. In terms of seeing people with disabilities in the film industry specifically, personally I've only been in it for a year, I haven't. Um, another kind of just being totally honest, you have to do like a HSE medical and reach certain yeah. things to be able to qualify as like a supervisor or in water support. So I don't know really what that would entail um, for certain things. Yeah, because I'm restrict, I, I, I'm restricted. I can't go. I'm restricted um, because of an ileostomy. I can't go below 20 meters. But because my passions are wildlife photography on land and transferring it into the water, um, and I like to use natural light, that you know it doesn't really matter to me that I can't go below 20 meters. So you know it, I might be middle aged now, but I'd like to think I've still got a fair amount of time ahead of me that I can try and do something with it. And it, you know it's inspiring coming to this show every year. I see more people with a whole range of disabilities and abilities than at any other event you will go to. And, and that's how inclusive diving is, it's how great it is, and I think we should be showing more of the fact that, that diving is for anyone, it's not an exclusive club and you don't have to be superhuman to get under the water, actually it frees you. Amen. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and I think as well, like, I think when we're all under the water, whether a boy or a girl, we're all we're all equals underwater. Yeah. We're not supposed to be there, but we make it happen. And I think, like, even if you are producing films and videos, put it online. Put it because I personally search for archive online for my job to find people who we could work with. And I don't know who they are, whether they're a boy or a girl, until I start emailing them yeah. and I see their footage first. So use that. Don't, yeah, don't let anything hold you back. Manifest it. <laughs> okay, we've got another one over here. Hello. Um, a lot of people who work in the industry tend to have degrees, but not everyone is obviously able to. Do you have any advice for somebody who doesn't have the qualifications to get into filmmaking or into conservation? don't need a degree for filmmaking, I can tell you that. I absolutely agree that you, do, you don't need a degree for filmmaking and actually my dad, he's a director and producer and he dropped out of school at 16. And I think that you absolutely shouldn't let that hold you back. I think that if you're passionate about something and you really go for it and you put everything you have into it, you 100% can make it in this career. And I think the nice thing about the wildlife filmmaking industry is that you're very much so judged on the work you put out there, not based on what your qualifications are beforehand. So actually for me, it's like, uh, yes, I did study marine biology. Yes, I did do a master's, but it was much more about my photography and the film that I produced that was more what got people interested and thought, made them think that I could do something in the industry rather than saying like I have this qualification and this qualification and the majority of camera operators that I meet also don't have a formal education it's very much so learning on the job and just making the most of all of those moments and putting themselves out there so don't let it hold you back yeah I agree um, I think um, experience especially in conservation and filmmaking both is a lot more worthwhile than just studying from books 
because it's your in-field experience that you can bring to the table, your ability to travel, to be able to navigate, you know, crazy environments or talk your way through, you know, permits or fees that you might incur in your travels, <laughs> stuff like that. Being savvy, I think, is very useful in the filmmaking industry, being able to network, being able to talk. So I don't just don't think of it as being academic. Think about the skills that you can pick up in your diving environment as well, being like a part of your diving club and the role that you bring to that. All of that life skills, I think, you can defi it's definitely applicable. And I mean, I do have an academic background, but I think they wanted to know more about my life experience as well. One more here. Hi, my name is Daisy. Thank you. It's really inspiring to hear you all on stage as a fellow young woman. I also learned to dive when I was really young and it really showed me about the earth and taught me to learn about the natural environment. And now I'm working in sustainability to try and protect that. But what do you think the role of the media is in raising awareness about issues such as climate change, plastic pollution? Because sometimes, such as the Blue Planet series, which was incredible and raised so much awareness, they don't always attack these issues head on and they kind of allude to it. But I'm not sure that many of the public would make that connection without being told directly. But also I know if you're too direct about these issues you can alienate people so I just wanted to hear your opinion thank you I mean I think that we can change a lot through uh, television um, so it is a huge part of it right now so we've had Blue Planet which kind of tackles it from a perspective like you were saying so it's not too head-on but then we also have programs the, the BBC are doing loads at the moment about just plastic pollution and it does focus on one subject but I think the problem with those is that you do have to be quite interested in it to actually watch it. Um, so I think at the moment a big push and a better step to be taken would be for people like us to just share more posts on social media so more younger people can see it. Because, um, I mean, not a lot of peop young people like me watch television anymore. It's all on streaming sites and stuff. So definitely getting onto streaming sites such as Netflix is going to be a huge step for the future. I agree, I think that film is such an essential role in conservation and that was exactly why I got into the filmmaking industry it was purely because I was passionate about the oceans and as a marine biologist I was seeing all of these threats that are facing our oceans and wanted to think, okay, well, what is the best way I could possibly tackle this? And I think that is the beauty of media, is that you can show something that's beautiful, you can inspire people, you can, make, you can welcome them into your world and hopefully make them care about something through these beautiful images. And then through that, you can thread in these bigger conservation messages. And I agree that sometimes the issues aren't addressed as head-on as they should be, but I think it is a really difficult balance between leaving people with this almost climate fatigue, where they're exhausted and they're drained and they just feel hopeless, and instead really focusing on these positive messages and going, okay, we understand that the ocean is in this state, but let's talk about the solutions. Let's talk about this local community that has done this amazing work to restore their reef or this local movement to go and clean up their ocean. And I think in those ways, if we'd make it more solution-based, we can make some really inspiring media, but we can also do it in a way that will leave people motivated and excited rather than depressed and sad and hopefully feeling that they can really do something to save our oceans. Um, it's amazing to hear what you've what you've done so far. I just wondered, what have you not? What is there anything you haven't done? But if if you haven't done it, what would you want to do next? Where could you go? What do you want to do? Hmm. Wow. There's a lot of things that I could say here. Um, Iceland definitely want to do Iceland. Um, not just the plate things, but there's oh mum, close your ears, mum, because there's <laughs> the reason I want to do. Uh, I'm not a big person for cave diving but there's one cave that I've got my eye on that I've forgotten the name of but it's in Iceland and it just looks stunning it does look like you're in space um, yeah that's definitely top on the list uh, this is such a hard one. I don't think it gets any easier. I think the longer you're kind of in this industry, the more you find out about more and more just incredible places. But top of my bucket list, I would love to visit Antarctica one day. And the idea of diving under the ice there, that to me would be the absolute pinnacle, I think. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Um, for me, it would be Cocos Islands, uh, schools of hammerhead sharks. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's for me. <laughs> Amazing. Any more questions from the audience? 
Okay, well, the girls, sorry, the girls that scuba have got a stand. Tell me what stand number it is. Nine zero, so 90, which is sort of over there by the, the tri dive pool. So if you want to come and have a chat with them and just get even more inspired than you possibly can be, um, uh, please go over there and, and visit them and sign up, get on the mailing list. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, for, thank you, Sarah, for chairing this. Thank you, girls, for sharing your, your experiences, for inspiring all of us women in diving. Ladies and gentlemen, girls at Scuba. Thank you very much.